Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a relatively quick inbox review and it's going to be an inbox review of the kit you can see in front of you which is Edwards 148 scale BF110 G2 and it's the weekend edition kit. Now I got this kit as a prize for coming second in the first international scale modeler group build. So first of all, a huge thank you to Lee and Paul for for running that, and you know again for uh, choosing me as a as a prize winner. And I thought I've had this kit for a little bit now, and um, it's not started or anything yet. And I thought, well, I hadn't done a review of it, so I thought, oh, I'll stick a quick review up. So let's take a quick look at the box then to start with. Um, as you can see, it's nice and colourful. I stuck it. Uh, under my monitor, and so I don't know why I did that. Anyway, let's get that out of the way. Okay, so I think these are the two schemes that come in the box. Oh, sorry, it's one of the schemes that come in the box, uh, which is a G2R1 with the underslung 37mm cannon based uh, near Prague in 1944. So it's your splinter two-tone grey and green camo on the upper, your normal uh, RLM 76 light, light blue colour underneath and and mottling along the side. I quite like that scheme. Uh, I'm not great at mottling and the airbrush I have is it, it's good but it's not as good when it comes to trying to do things like that. Um, you get quite a bit of over, like splattering around the edges and stuff uh, when you're trying to do small stuff like that. It becomes quite obvious. So I might, in the future, invest in the mottling masks from Airwaves for that because that should make life a lot easier. Uh, it gives you the paints here. I think they are uh, color numbers are. GSI colors, GSI colors. I'm not sure what that is. I think it might be guns colors that they use. And the other side is just information and information. Right, so it's a box full of plastic. It is chocker with plastic, um, which is nice. So let's start here. We have two bags of clear sprues, which is nice to see that they've put each one in a separate bag so that they, they don't rub against each other. They're also little Ziploc bags, which is kind of cool. Um, so we have the rear of the canopy, um, a middle section of the canopy, your front, and another rear. And a side, a uh, middle section, but with one of the sides missing, I believe. Um, side windows, I think. I think that is a um, uh, front windshield armor plate, another windshield, a flip up top section, and I think that's the section that goes with this. So, and I, I've not fully looked yet, but I believe that it's basically two different options, so you can have open or closed canopies, and I think the fronts are just because there might be two variants in the box, and the canopy um, canopies are slightly different. I could be wrong, I'm not entirely sure. This one seems to have uh, some holes here, whereas this one doesn't, so I'm not entirely sure. That's a bit loose on there, but it's, it's not okay. Um, optical clarity is... It's hard to tell through the plastic bag, but it looks pretty good. I mean, if we look at the dirt on the desk there, it looks the same. It doesn't seem to be too... On the flat parts, anyway, it doesn't seem to be putting too much magnification or anything on it. They seem scratch-free and things, so, um, so yeah, they look very good. Okay, so... Bag one has two sprues in it. Oh, sorry, you're out of focus there. You might not be able to see all this. This camera zooms right in. 
which is a bit annoying. Uh, we have upper wings, lower wings. I mean, as you can see, it's a fair, it's a fair size. And on the other sprue, we've got fuselage halves, nose. I think that's the pod. It's like a, I think it's a pod for the cannon or just a, or something. That's the bomb rack plate. Uh, one of the seats, tail planes, and other bits and bobs. I think that's part of the instrument panel. Uh, I'm led to believe this thing has an incredibly detailed cockpit. So I'm looking forward to building that. Uh, there's some very, very small parts in this kit. Um, sorry for any reflection from the plastic bag, but... Some nice raised detail on the, on the inside of the cockpit there. Which is good because it's got quite a large cockpit, so good to see. Now this side is detailed, and as you can see, this side's not. I believe, from having a look through it before, that for some reason the cockpit tub builds up with one side attached, which has effectively the right-hand side's, you know, sidewall detail on it. Why that is, I'm not entirely sure. So I'm sure I'll come to that in the instructions. Um. So let's have a look. See, very finely recessed panel lines and rivets. Um, it's a big enough scale to have recessed rivets. I mean, look, that thing is covered in rivets. All these tiny little rivets, lots of little panel lines, access panels. So, while that's incredibly nice. I'm also incredibly worried that it will be very easy to to lose some of that detail through painting. Oddly, I've never built an Edward kit before, and uh, there's like random parts stuck on the middle of the sprue tree here. Um, you know, these, these little random parts here, but that's quite cool. So, nice and crisp, no flash, a little bit of flash on some of the sprue, tiny little bit, there's a little bit... A little bit just there. I don't mind flash. Flash is easy to clean off. It's not a major problem. It's a major problem if it means that one part ends up being thicker than the other because the mold hasn't closed properly or something, but yeah. Okay, so bag number two has three sprues in it, two large and one smaller one. The smaller one seems to have now this is the cannon one of the cannon the cannon pod I believe that goes under the belly because there's the the barrel for it. Another nose cone. There's about f um, four different nose cones, I think, in this kit for some reason. Uh, and then a sprue underneath. I mean, you've got some very finely detailed parts here. They might be cannon gun barrels of some kind. And uh, by the looks of it, that one might end up being a little bit bent. It'd probably be worth replacing with some wire. And what else we've got? Instrument panels. Uh, instrument panels? Engine nacelles. Um, props, one piece props, but they look nice. Um, more cockpit parts, tail planes, uh, spinner, another cannon, um, that could be the anti air MG. Doo -doo 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 -doo, another spinner, instrument panel. There's two provided. I think you get a decal, so you've got two options. You can have one where you can put the decal, <coughs> or one with raised detail to paint. I'll probably use that one, I like doing that. <coughs> This is the main cockpit floor, I believe. Um, what else do we have here? This is all upside down. Uh, that's that's the uh, MG that goes out the back of the the fuselage, I believe. It's a little bit pathetic in terms of its detail, which is a shame. But um, uh, more tailplanes. I think that's just the other side of the tailplanes. Lots of small parts, but all nicely molded. Um, yeah, no major problems, and I can't see any ejection pin marks in places they shouldn't really be. Um, in fact, I can't see any. I think they've been very clever and actually only ejected it from the moulds on the actual sprue itself, as you can see, or on these extra bits, which are fine because they just clip off. 
Well, there's some on the inside of the engine they sells there, but that's to be expected. That's not a problem. Good. Uh, Alright, let's move on, because time's moving on. Okay, this sprue, when I first looked at it, I was rather scared. Now, I think the exhausts all come as individual exhaust stubs. Which is quite cool, but there are so many little parts. Uh, yeah. That's going to be fun. MG. Uh, so, um, and we'll drums for the MGs. What else we got? The nose nose guns. Other side, more small parts. Part of the undercarriage. I think they're the stub where the exhaust stubs mount into. Uh, tail wheel strut. Uh, main landing gear. Yeah, again, all nicely moulded, although I'm going to be terrified of trying to cut all those little parts out. And it's just going to have to be cut out with um, a nice sharp hobby knife, and making sure you don't ping the bits into the carpet. Here we have uh, radiators, more instrument panels, flaps, ailerons, undercarriage doors, more parts of the cockpit, Main wheels, um, nicely treaded, and also brake cable, brake disc detail. Um, more instrument panel-y type things. More flats. And optional propellers as well, and different spinners. The the ones with the... So uh, that'll be interesting to see where... Um, Unless this is a, the standard BF one 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 zero sprue, and one of the other ones is specific to this variant, so they might be the normal ones. And actually, it's the fat bladed props that I need for this kit. I'll have to have a look. Um, big drop tanks, smaller drop tanks, bombs. Uh, you get underwing mortars for this one. Uh, what look like big cannon shells of some kind. Um, small bombs, medium bombs, drop tanks. Uh, that's the other side of the cockpit, I believe, under there. Um, so yeah, all nicely detailed. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, decal sheet. Thankfully there isn't many, so there is actually only one option in this particular kit. Um, I find this very strange. Not the fact that there's swastikas, I like that, but they're two part here, but then they're full here. Now, I believe this is probably so that it gives Edward the option of very quickly cutting out these ones, so that if you were to buy this kit in Germany, and I got in trouble for this before, uh, you know, I said said that uh, you know, swastikas were banned in a lot of countries of Europe, and somebody decided to try and correct me, and actually... You know, okay, they might have a fair point, but they were bloody, they were an arse about it. So, um, I believe that for those countries where swastikas are banned, and there are some, uh, Germany being the main one, uh, that it means that they can very quickly cut this out. So that if you receive this kit and you live in Germany, you would probably only have these because then, you know, it's not Edward's fault if you then go and, you know, make a swastika on your kit. Then you're, in, you know, Edward as a company can't can't get in trouble for that then. But they're nice, they're very, they're pretty matte, um, they're in nice register, there is uh, next to no carrier film, which is really good, especially for things like the instrument panel if you were to use that, because often, I know the Airfix ones have a habit of being a bit too big, and it's because there's a bit of a extra carrier film sometimes, which hangs over the edge. All the little stencil ones are in perfect register, they're legible. Um you know it's one four eight scale so you'd almost expect that anyway. I mean that's all that's all legible. As you can see it's that's my finger still quite small. Um even you can push this easier through the camera. Uh, even even these are legible. These tiny little stencils here. So I hate these bleeding numbers. What is it with the Germans? 
and they built their airplanes and all along the you know the the 109 has it as well and the 110 the the very pronounced ribs down the down the rear fuselage and each one has a number on it on the outside and there's bloody 20 of them and each one of these is an individual decal <clears throat> anyway I left them off on my other 110 I think because I couldn't be bothered painting them I'm painting them doing it uh, Edward instructions sprue map not numbered but you know the actual parts are quite clear so if you just match the sprue up to it you can you can see the sprue themselves is numbered uh, we've got the colour call outs here in Mr. Colour and Mr. Metal Colour um, most of them are being a World War II German plane most of them are RLM colours which are very easy to find in other ranges it's quite a small booklet and that's only A4 folded out and uh, yeah I mean lots of detail into the cockpit so we start with the cockpit I mean this is the control column you know the levers are all separate and here you've got your option decal or just paint it rudder pedals um, and a picture of what it should look like up so it gives you an idea of the angle things need to be the steps are not numbered actually which is a little bit strange um, but you know there you go more parts for the floor um, I mean I assume if you bought the profi pack version of this kit um, there would probably be photo itch replacements for some of this um, I mean yeah so there's walls for each cockpit although one's taller than the other so you can still see this raised detail um, all these little radio boxes build up into one panel um, Uh, yeah, typical instructions. So your nose bay. It's a bit of a shame because there's quite a lot of detail in this nose bay for all these, for all these guns, and yeah, it just gets covered up. So I don't know. I actually have a magazine. One I can't remember. It's scale aircraft modeling or something, and somebody had modeled a, a one four eight scale ME one hundred nine uh, with battle damage and stuff through the wings, where they'd used a the Dremel to thin out the wings to get a scale you know that pop marking you often get from flak and things and I think it's cannon nose guns were, were open and stuff so I might have a look at that and be interesting to see if I could maybe try and try and do that anyway I'll not bore you going through all this uh, your position for your stencil data and there is only one colour scheme available in this particular kit it's not in colour but it's black and white of a colour picture which is better than which is better than nothing and it's a little bit better than um, what Revell sometimes come out with where you have funny different patterns for each colour so it's quite easy to tell what colour should be where so I hope you enjoy that um, this quick review a oh, well, quick review, it's nearly 20 minutes um, thank you for watching, please leave a comment please subscribe and uh, like the video if you want and leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.